Today's video sponsor is Surfshark. Hello and welcome to another video and good morning from Dublin Airport here in the Republic of Ireland. Today I'm flying to London and some of you may not know that Dublin to London is my most flown route in my whole life. So this is a pretty familiar trip for me, but I'm doing something new today. I'm flying with Aer Lingus in a product they refuse to call business class. Let's go and check out Aer Lingus's airspace on a very special aircraft. Come with me and enjoy the video. All Aer Lingus flights depart from Terminal 2, the newer of Dublin Airport's terminals. This is just a few hundred yards from the Radisson Blue Hotel, which is where I spent the previous night. Ireland has even more restrictive Covid rules than England, and it was no surprise to see the terminal mostly empty. There was therefore no problem in getting hold of one of the self-service checking kiosks, which I've got a little more used to using over the years. Security, which is often totally rammed full of people on a summer morning like this, is upstairs and totally empty as well. When using Dublin, I've mostly used Terminal 1 because I tend to fly with British Airways, and prior to that, BMI. Remember them? Still, Terminal 2 is very familiar to me, and it's so eerie to see the airport in such a deserted state. Several Aer Lingus flights were due to depart before mine, yet the whole place was empty the whole time I was there. This sign says that alternative food outlets, plural, were open. But actually, because I wasn't using US pre-clearance, there was really only one available to me. A small coffee shop just past the duty-free. Can you keep going that way? Yeah, just one, please. Thank you. Enjoy. Cheers. So apparently airspace also comes with lounge access. Now, as far as I know, The Aer Lingus Gold Circle Lounge here at Dublin is closed, but I'm just going to go down and double check and make sure that's right, because some of the information I found online is a bit conflicting. It's not looking good. <laughs> yeah, it's closed. Been in here before. It's all right. Closed today, though. A lot of you know I've also got a priority pass, which would normally get me into this lounge, the T2 lounge here at Dublin Airport. That's closed as well. The one in Terminal 1 is open, which is a fair schlep down that way, which we could use, but there's only about half an hour or so to go into a boarding, and uh, yeah, it's not really worth the big long trek down to Terminal 1. Despite the serious lack of passengers anywhere in the terminal, the airspace around Dublin was still fairly busy. Flights to Brussels and Birmingham were leaving, as well as a hop flight to Paris, and these two Ryanair flights heading to sunny Spain. This white Aer Lingus livery is relatively new, and to be honest, I really prefer the distinctive heavy green one it's replacing. All Aer Lingus aircraft are named after Irish saints. This one, for example, is named for Colum Killer, or Saint Columba, who was born exactly 1500 years ago in 521 AD. He's maybe best known in Ireland for founding the city of Derry in the north of the island, but you might not also know he apparently founded the town of Swords as well, which is exactly where Dublin Airport is today and the town where Aer Lingus has its registered offices. The concourse at Terminal 2 has some panels showing some of the airport's heritage. Those of you who have stuck around the channel for a while will already know the original terminal building from 1941 is still standing, as I filmed it here in 2019. Also, I was just checking earlier how many flights have actually completed between Dublin and London, or vice versa. 
I looked it up in my log and I've done 52 flights between Dublin and London. It's, it's quite a lot of flying. All of these American flags here, these Stars and Stripes flags, they actually denote a gate which is available for use if you're flying to the USA. Because one of the things that Dublin Airport offers is pre-clearance with the TSA in America. And that means effectively, when you land in the United States, you arrive as a domestic flight and you do all of your pre-clearance here in Dublin. So if you're not going to get into America, they're going to tell you here instead of after the end of a seven or eight hour flight. Our aircraft is an Airbus A321LR, which is easily distinguished from regular 321s by its very large engines. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas, but Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash wingingit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Hello. I'm good, thanks. Thanks a lot. Sorry. So here we go, familiar airports, familiar route, but a brand new type of aircraft and product for me today. It's the Aer Lingus A321. Aww. Thanks a lot. This aircraft is normally used for secondary transatlantic routes and has a lovely alternating 2211 business class layout. Hiya, morning. You're very welcome aboard your Lingus flight. EI 154 to London Heathrow. Once again, I'd like to welcome you aboard and we do hope you enjoy your short flight. These super throne seats can be found in rows 3 and 5 and are incredible for the solo traveller and they also cost nothing to reserve. The seats neatly slot together and save little space because the footwells lie beneath the storage consoles of the seats in front. Folks, all of up now ahead of schedule and get you underway very shortly. About a five minute taxi and a flight time in this morning of 55 minutes. Very pleasant morning indeed. And a little bit of drizzle earlier on in London Heathrow.
on takeoff we get a great view of the new 10 left 28 right runway which is just about complete and ready for use. One thing I've not yet explained is what airspace actually is. It's basically Aer Lingus's premium short-haul product, but they refuse to call it business class, and none of the fares they sell on short-haul are technically business class fares. It's really designed for their short-haul fleet, which has a blocked middle seat for airspace customers. This is what it looks like on a bog-standard A320 95% of the time. So how come I got such a sweet ride on this long-haul plane? Well, on one return flight a day, this aircraft, which would otherwise sit spare at Dublin, is used for the London Shuttle. Make sure you check the seat map for airspace, and if it looks like this, you're in. Not everyone in airspace today has a ticket, it seems. This joyrider managed to sneak on board and evade quarantine. By the way, those tiny holes in aircraft windows aren't for insects to escape. They're there to bleed air pressure between the three different panes in an aircraft window to make sure pressure is equalised in a safe way between the cabin and the outside of the fuselage. While we're on the topic of air, yes, this aircraft does come with individual air vents and you know how much I love those. So, what's the seat like? Well, it's pretty good. The throne seats have two huge storage areas either side of the seat, plus a small cubby under the screen for the headphones. Down at the side, there's another really handy space to put books and magazines, and your wallet and phone and so on will definitely be best off in here too. Elsewhere, we have intuitive seat controls, USB and universal power ports, headphone jacks and a reading lamp. It's a pretty good seat and one I'd love to try on a long haul flight someday. Dublin to London flights nearly always follow a similar route. We're heading east across the top of Anglesey in Wales before making a turn southeast over Howden Airport. From there, it's straight down to Birmingham, which is about 90 miles from London, and it's where we start to descend. The lack of air traffic compared to pre-COVID times does lead to some interesting routes into Heathrow now. I don't recall doing this weird dog leg into the normal approach pattern over North London before. We then turn and fly straight into Heathrow from the east over the city. My favourite features of the seat are this table, which is super sturdy and folds out pretty nicely, and this little remote, which is unfussy and easy to use, although you will probably still be able to touch the screen anyway when seated upright. There are options on the entertainment screen to check out the food offer, but with both this and the survey option not working, I was beginning to suspect something was amiss. Anyway, having confirmed this in-flight entertainment system was definitely not made bespoke for an Irish airline, I checked out the entertainment. Surprisingly, and unlike British Airways, who refuse to pay for the licensing rights, Aer Lingus shows entertainment on short flights with long-haul aircraft. Curb Your Enthusiasm is one of my favourite shows and I was delighted to see it on the system. One of the things I was looking forward to was seeing what the catering offer was on board. It's just this bottle of water. No service today because of COVID apparently. So this is what you're supposed to get. A tea or coffee and just a snack from the regular economy in-flight purchase menu. So it's not a big loss. But I do believe in doing my research and clearly on the website only Aer Lingus regional flights have no service. Air Lingus Regional, that's a specific brand of flights which used to be operated by these small ATR aircraft, so I'm not quite sure what's happened on this flight. Lots of people ask me how I always know which landmarks I'm passing over. Lots of landmarks are really distinctive, prisons are very easy to spot. This one was easy to look up, 
it was seen just as we did our right turn in northeast Wales and just before this announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning. First officer speaking, just a quick update for you from the flight deck. Currently at 33,000 feet now, just passed by Manchester. Next up is where we will be starting our descent for Heathrow. Despite being on the ground there at 24 past 8 local time, within 20 minutes early this morning. Fish on the ground, it's not a bad morning there. Temperature at the moment of 16. So checking out exactly where that was on flight radar and noting the distinctive shape of the settlement around the prison, I was easily able to find it on Google Earth. And here it is, it's Her Majesty's Prison, Berwyn. I'd often look these things up in real time on the flight, but sadly the Wi-Fi wasn't operational on this sector. So what's left to do? Check out the recline function of the seat. It works and is comfortable. And of course, a bathroom visit. It's a pretty standard A321 bathroom with no bells and whistles. But it always amuses me that there are air vents in the toilets to blast you in the face as you sit down. We're very lucky in London that the main approach to our main airport is over the city, which means brilliant views for most people arriving here. I'll let you comment below if you spot landmarks you recognise. Maybe in the video clips there are some places that have happy memories for you. Let me know in the comments. I couldn't resist pointing out one more landmark people often don't recognise when flying into Heathrow. This golf course and industrial estate was actually the Heathrow area's first airport. It was called Heston Aerodrome and is where the Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain flew from to Germany to meet Hitler for appeasement talks in 1939. Now called Air Link's golf course and industrial estate, you'll be pleased to know the old hangar is a listed building and now houses a cash and carry. So there you go, hey? I hope you've really enjoyed this video. COVID travel can be confusing. And to be honest, I'm a bit confused about the lack of product features in airspace, like the snacks and Wi-Fi. Normally, I would fly British Airways on this route. And to be honest, BA's proper business class is similarly priced and way better than airspace on a normal A320. But if you can get this daily A321 long range service, it's definitely worth the experience, if not for the novelty than anything else. I paid €149 Euro one way, about £127 sterling. Don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and three extra months of Surfshark VPN. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.